So in this problem, we're really just trying to get a sense of using our general idea of the ideas of entropy being connected to the idea of freedom of motion. More freedom of motion means more ability to spread out energy, and that's what the universe wants. And so the change in entropy will tend to be larger when molecules have more freedom, or just substance has more freedom. So we've got four questions here. I'm just going to walk very quickly through my reasoning for the answers that you see. In the first reaction, we've got two hydrogen sulfide gas plus SO2 gas, giving us three solid sulfur and two water gas. That solid sulfur is in a little clumpy pile. We've try to restrict the motion of molecules. But the way to approach this problem in our understanding is just look at the number of stoichiometric coefficients of gas on each side in that case. We see 2H2S, we see 1SO2, that's three stoichiometric coefficients of gas on the reactant side. On the product side, we've got that clump of solid, pretty low entropy in that case, because no freedom of motion for those sulfur atoms other than the vibration that they do inside the solid. And we also have two water gas. So the first reaction is going from three stoichiometric coefficients, or let's say three moles of gas, to two moles of gas. Well, that's a whole lot less freedom of motion, a lot less molecules whizzing about the room in that particular case. So my prediction for A is that the entropy is decreasing for this process, just based on the idea of freedom of motion. For question B, where we take two mercury oxide solid and get mercury liquid and O2 gas, it's going to be the same idea. We're going from this little pile of solid to this liquid that could move around in the container and this gas that can fill the room. That's a whole lot more freedom of motion for the energy contained in the system. So I would predict that the entropy increases for reaction B. Reaction C where we've got zinc solid and silver oxide solid, giving us zinc oxide solid and two silver solid. Well, we're going from solid to solid. We're going from piles of stuff to piles of stuff. So how we would understand the freedom of motion is essentially the differing environments that the atoms can vibrate in. Well, we don't really know enough about that yet. So I would have to say that I really am not very certain about the entropy, whether it's increasing or decreasing for this. There likely is a decrease or increase, but we would need to figure out some numbers. And we will see eventually that there is a way to do that using something very similar to Hess's law that we saw for enthalpy changes. But for now, C, I'm uncertain. For D, where we're taking two chloride ions in aqueous solution and two liquid water, and it's undergoing electrolysis to give us two hydroxide ions in aqueous solution and then some hydrogen and chlorine gas, that's that same idea that we've got some liquid water here with stuff floating around in it, and something happens and we've got some different stuff floating around in the water, but we've also got all this gas that went moving out, possibly into the room. That is a whole lot more freedom of motion. And so my prediction is that the entropy will increase for this last process.